Hey all you dome lovers, it's Johnny here. Uh, Mila and I just got back from the big island of Hawaii. Uh, we're kind of exhausted, um, but it was such a magical, fun time. Uh, we basically built this 20 foot diameter zone in about six or seven days. Uh, so that's about 300 square feet, this beautiful skylight, and it turned out awesome. Uh, when we got there to Hilo, pretty much spent a day uh, acquiring materials and tools with our host and then the next six days we spent building the foundation the frame getting it sheathed getting the skylight all waterproofed then we wrapped it in a uh, roofing underlayment and that was about six days of work to get it dried in uh, with me, Mila, and one of our hosts. So basically three people building, one person uh, for support, and we got so much done so incredibly fast. I don't want this video to be super long, but I do wanna walk you through the process of building this zone because I didn't cut any bevels or any uh, dihedral angles or anything complicated. I just made the parallelograms and we were able to throw it up super fast. Now this isn't the only way that you can do this. Um, given the materials that we had access to on short notice, this is the way we decided to do it. I can kind of mention some alternative ways that you could do it as we go. The total cost of the build was about $7,000 US, um, but that's including a lot of things that were a little bit more expensive that um, may not be expensive in other parts of the world or for other materials. That includes the premium Reinke aluminum shake roofing. You can use uh, less expensive roofing and that's totally fine, but this stuff is amazing. It lasts forever. Also, all the wood on this build is 100% borate treated because of termites in Hawaii. So that uh, ups the cost of the lumber quite a bit. We use three quarter inch sheathing for the walls and you probably don't have to go that beefy, but we did just for strength and quality purposes. And another thing to consider is just how expensive things are in Hawaii. That being said, this beautiful structure, 300 square feet for seven grand on the island, still a pretty amazing deal. So let's get started. I'll show you the build. Okay, so the first step of many builds is the foundation. Um, we went with a wood deck for this because it was going to be a multi-use space. And because Hawaii doesn't have a frost line, we weren't worried about putting it on just regular concrete blocks, on gravel pads, and anchoring it down later with rebar. I went with the pizza slice method because I knew it was going to be the fastest, uh, even though it uses a little bit more wood. It does make for a quick and sturdy deck. The great thing about building a deck like this is you basically just have to cut each component 10 times. And you make 10 pizza slices, as long as your cuts are accurate, they're gonna line up perfectly. And even though I was making all my cuts with a circular saw, I was able to cut all the pieces for this deck very quickly. We didn't have the chop saw at that point, but if we did, it would have been three times as fast. This method is pretty nice too for marking the location of your post holes. Since we were just digging holes and filling them with gravel and setting blocks on, it was real easy to find their location just using the one pizza slice on a pivot from the center. So as long as the tip of that triangle stays in the center, you can move it concentrically around and mark one end and then keep going around, lining it up and it'll give you pretty much where the center of those joists are gonna be. So after the holes are filled with gravel and tamped down, uh, we put some blocks on there and filled those with gravel. And while the crew was putting together the pizza slices, I was taking the elevations of the blocks to calculate the post height. And once the slices are put together, you can add the joists in between. It's pretty easy, they just fit in. 
and we also use GRK structural screws to frame these joists in. So make sure you're using adequate hardware for the application. So here you can see the pizza slices going together and it really is easy as that. So the next step was to secure the framing to our posts and add some lateral knee bracing to prevent the deck from moving around. So we laid out the plywood in a real basic way, staggering the seams and just tacking it down. Um, these joists were two foot on center, so there was support every two feet. There were some seams that were a little bit bigger though, so we made sure to put blocking underneath those to support the connections of the plywood. You can also use tongue and groove to kind of get around this. And once all the plywood was tacked on and cut to size, we basically just snapped lines and screwed it in. So now that we had the deck all put together, um, I basically had to create a workstation because the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna make a bunch of repeat cuts. So I want to be able to set a stop on my saw and make accurate, repeatable cuts. Normally we're working in a shop, but obviously we didn't have that option this time. So my first step is to make some saw horses and a bench for the miter saw. So I'm basically set up as follows. I've got two saw horses. I've got my saw sitting on two two by sixes on the saw horses and screwed down. I put another two by six on top of the saw table, propped up on either side by a two by four on edge. All that's fastened down. Everything's in place and I can use this two by six as basically a static work area that I can set stop blocks on and make accurate cuts. So because of the climate that we're in, this building needs little to no insulation. So I opted to use two by threes to save some lumber, but the thing is I don't like to buy two by threes at the lumber yard because most of the time they come warped. So basically to save money and still ensure a quality product, we got two by sixes and then Mila's gonna rip them down on the table saw. So my first step is to cut everything into four foot lengths so that it's more manageable to rip down and easier to handle as we start cutting the struts. So whenever you get a Trillium Domes plan, it always comes with a zome or dome builders method. Um, this is like a step-by-step -step guide, but it also gives you some information on the geometry and how the shapes work. There's basically two ways to build a zome. You can do one with all the dihedral angles cut, and that means that the inner edges and the outer edges line up perfectly. This method is a bit more time consuming and requires some compound bevel cuts. The way that we do it here is we don't cut any bevels, we just make the frames and then we basically connect them on the inner edge and this creates a little bit of a gap on the outside of the framing. But since this is going to get a plywood and aluminum shake roof, you're never going to see it. As long as you're using proper structural fasteners into the frames, it remains an incredibly strong structure while saving a ton of time. Okay, so let's talk about just how simple this is. The workflow is basically that each of these four struts that make up an individual panel can be cut long to short. Each side of the strut is the same exact angle and they're all the same exact length. So when you get the plans, you'll get an overall side length for each individual panel. And the crazy thing about zones is those are also all the same. So the only thing that's going to differ panel to panel is going to be your miter angle. So basically what you can do is you can cut one of your struts at that angle and then measure the length of the cut. So you can subtract that from your overall length and that's what you'll cut your struts to because they butt into each other reciprocally. Once you think you've got it pretty close, then you can cut four of them using the stop block method to cut them all exactly the same. And then you can take them aside, assemble them, double check all your measurements. And if you're good, then you just keep cutting along. So for each of these panels, I also put a brace on at least one of them. Um, so I basically screwed one end, then measured the mid length, 
and then I screwed the other end down to hold it true. That's for when we're tracing the plywood out. You know that your template is accurate. And once you've got all your struts cut, it's really easy to just put them all together really fast. So there's not many of them, but there are a handful of half panels that are basically cut out to make way for the doorway. The way I usually handle it is I build the full panels like normal, and then I cut a strut that will fit in the middle, and then I'll basically use that middle strut to trace where I need to cut the other struts in order for it to fit in. The angles for these middle struts are a little bit sharper than the other ones. They're like more than 45 degrees usually. And we got a saw that goes all the way to 60 for that reason. But I did want to come up with a way to do it without a miter saw that went to 60 degrees. I've got a 45 degree stop block and I was still able to cut those sharp angles with some help. So the only other angles that were larger than 45 degrees were for the top panels that made up the skylight. And I also wanted to make a jig to cut those without using the miter saw's ability to go all the way to 60 degrees, just to show that people who don't have a saw that can go all the way to 60 degrees can still do this. Basically all I did was make another fence 15 degrees off of the original fence and then I set the saw to 45 degrees so 15 plus 45 equals 60. So the only other consideration I made for the top windows since it was going to have a thinner material on it the polycarbonate is only a quarter inch versus the sheathing on the rest of the panels is three quarter inch in this case doesn't have to be I made these panels out of two by fours while the other ones were two by threes so that gives it about an inch rise over the other panels and accounts for the material thickness. So for the lower windows, I decided to make a little shield shape. You can put any shape of windows in these. It just helps to have a little bit of room around them to flash it properly. So now that we've got the panels all made up, it's time to do some sheathing. There's a lot of ways you can do this, um, but this time we decided to go with three quarter inch plywood because it was treated and we didn't want to mess with termite stuff. In an ideal world, since it was uninsulated, we would have been able to use like a tongue and groove or something like that um, that would have knocked out the finish and the subroof at the same time. But we couldn't find anything that was treated, so we decided to go the safe route. To get the most efficient use of the sheet material, we laid down multiple sheets at a time and then laid the panels down right next to each other to create basically a parallel line. And that allowed us to trace out the panels and then cut them out. So you can see here how the panels are kind of overlapping where the sheets break and that's totally fine. Just make sure that when you are tracing the outline of your panels that the panel is braced true or that it's not skewed one way or another. You can also create some redundancy by adding a brace to the panel right before you sheath it. That way you know that the plywood's holding it true. And since there's a kind of a gap on either side, it doesn't have to fit perfectly. So the last thing we gotta worry about covering up is the skylights. These are inoperable, so they're just covered up with polycarbonate. I would recommend a fine tooth carbide blade or at least a brand new saw blade before you cut this stuff, but you can cut it with a normal circular saw. I was cutting it about five sheets at a time. First we start with the frame, then we lay down two sections of six inch flashing. That way the polycarbonate has something to shed water onto. I actually love using this one inch wide double sided glazing tape, but we didn't have enough to do all the windows. So on some of them, I just bedded the polycarbonate in silicone. So after you set the polycarbonate, I just attach the bottom of the panel. Now you wanna make sure if you're gonna run screws through the polycarbonate that you pre-drill the holes just through the polycarbonate, not through the wood, and that you use a grommeted screw and that the drill bit that you use needs to be a little bit bigger than the screw threads. And that allows the polycarbonate to move a little bit as it expands and contracts with the temperature. So now on one side of the top of the panel, I put silicone down and then I put another layer of the six inch flashing. 
and then I fasten that down the same exact way. Now the other side is gonna remain unflashed and unfastened. That way, when we put it all together, the piece that's hanging over on the left-hand side, as you can see here, will lap over that unfastened side. So that's all you have to do when you get up there is lap the flashing over and fasten it down. Okay, so there's only one more thing we have to do before we can start putting panels together, and that is cutting the base sections. Good thing is, base sections are super easy for zones. This is a 10-sided shape, so you just cut 10 of everything. The purpose of these is basically just to interface the zone frame with the deck frame. For the most part, it's just one angled piece of wood strong backed to a flat piece of wood that can be attached to the deck. For this design, I just ripped a two by 10 in half at this angle, and then I just cut the miters long to long. So now that we've got our deck built, we've got our base sections, and we've got our panels covered. You can even go so far as to put the roofing underlayment and even shingles on the zone panels before putting things together, if you wanted to. So when I'm setting the base sections, I start with a placeholder piece for the doorway. I fasten that to the deck, and then I start fastening the base pieces to each other, but I do not fasten those to the deck. Once they're all fastened together, you can pull some measurements and make sure that everything's right and as you're pulling the correct measurement, you can fasten them down going around and pulling opposite side to opposite side. In the plans, I set it up so that you can put the inside of the zone panels to the inside face of the base section. From there, it's pretty simple. You just start putting the panels together, screwing a little bit closer to the inside face. That way the panels can hinge a little bit more. I only put a couple of screws per strut um, when we're putting the zone together, but after everything's together, you can go through and screw everything down with proper structural screws. And I do that probably eight inches on center. As you get up a little bit higher in the frame, the panels will start to lean in a bit. And then having a piece of bamboo or a two by four to help support the panels from somebody on the ground really helps a lot. Now the doorway for the zone is really easy. There's basically just three components and you can reinforce it with as much framing as you want, but it doesn't need much. There's basically two door cards and one awning roof. So I had to button up the skylight before we could start putting the roofing felt on. So what I did was I went up and trimmed all the reciprocal flashing that was up there. And then I took some silicone and for the pieces of flashing that were overhanging, 
I put some silicone under them and then I pre-drilled and fastened those pieces to the polycarbonate. I also put two more flashing strips that go over the top continuously to cover up the center, but they do eventually want to get a custom cap made, maybe out of copper or something. So on this project, we used a synthetic roofing underlayment. If your budget allows for it, I would suggest using a full ice and water shield membrane, but it's really easy to apply. You just do it panel by panel. If you allow the membrane to overlap the bottom of the panels by six inches or so, then they'll all overlap the panels beneath them and it'll cover up all the seams perfectly. And it works the same way with roofing. So you pick a row of panels, starting with the bottom one, and you go around the circumference doing all those panels. Then you move up to the next set of panels and you go around and do all those. There's a ton of different ways you could do the roofing and there's a lot of different types of roofing that you could use. But as long as you maintain that overlap between the panels, you're gonna be fine. So that's pretty much what we got done in seven days. Uh, we had to leave shortly after that, but I do have some more details for you about windows. So these lower windows we treated really like operable skylights. So we had a curb and that's what sticks out of the frame and that gets waterproofed in with the roofing underlayment. Then we have the window itself, which actually sits over the curb. And when water sheds off that, it sheds straight onto the roofing. Then we have our flashing drip edge combo and that prevents water from getting behind the window. Now, if any ever did because of wind driven rain, you still have that waterproof curb there to prevent it from dripping inside. So because of project constraints and the fact that we only had seven days and we're traveling and everything, we didn't really get to do pretty much any interior details. And as sad as that is, the initial goal of this project was to get our hosts as far along as we could in seven days on a beautiful project and basically get it to the point where they could take it over themselves and get past the specialty part, the dome building part. And to be honest, we absolutely crushed that goal. If that's something that you'd be interested in, definitely talk to us because we really enjoyed it. I do wish that we had had more time to film and you know, really share a lot of the magical moments that we had. It was a lot more than just a work trip. And the moments that we got to spend in the zone were actually extremely magical. The way that the rain runs down the skylight, the way that the moonlight and the sunlight both paint flowers on the floor and the walls through the projection of the skylight, we just weren't able to capture it. So I hope this video hasn't been too boring or too dry. I just really wanted to explain the whole process of zone building with you. We have another zone coming up, which is going to be completely different where we cut all the bevels and it's going to be a greenhouse. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. I'm also excited to share that with you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing and following us on social media and stuff because we're doing pretty much fun stuff all the time.